For this trip, I head up to Canada to meet up with Sean from The Story Till Now and Teddy from Unwinding Roads. Canada decided to be super Canadian this trip and dump snow in June, which left us improvising on the go. I'm unwinding. This is gonna go down quick. My day started early as I wanted to beat all the traffic getting up to the border. The border crossing can really slow down progress, but on this day I was literally the only car in sight. Good morning. I, I'm going camping with some buddies up there. Buddies from the US or buddies Canadian buddies? Uh, Canadian buddies. Here. Thanks so much. After crossing, I switched to kilometers per hour, whatever that means, and we headed out. Throughout the drive to the trailhead, the rain was relentless, as was the fog. There was a lot of speculation amongst the three of us as to what the trail was going to look like, but none of us were prepared for what Mother Nature actually had in store. After topping off our tanks for the last time, we made it to the trailhead, got aired down, and hit the trail. This was the spot we were planning on camping the first night as it is a great starting point for the whipsaw, but these guys beat us to it. In talking to them, they informed us that there were two broken down Tahoes on the trail that they had not yet been able to recover. They also claimed we would be able to get around them, so we pressed on in search for our first night's camp. This is around the same time that it started snowing. I like trying to start fires in a more primitive fashion, so I always at least attempt it. However, it just wasn't gonna happen tonight. It won't even light with a match, dude. Okay, bacon right there. It's a bacon. We just call it bacon and ham. 
I don't know where this Canadian bacon thing started. I think Canadian bacon specifically is like the small round ones, right? I don't know. I think so, yeah. Obviously, when you have an American and two Canadians around a fire, Canadian bacon is going to be discussed. With the fire going, it was dinner time, and tonight, Teddy was the chef. Barbecue bacon cheeseburger, courtesy of Teddy. No. Teddy, what's it called? Bacon cheddar burger. Bacon cheddar burger, so sorry. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me, Sean, I appreciate it. Hey, no. I, mean, I gotta do some work around here too, right? <laughs> just, just grammar now. Just yelling at people. <laughs> yeah. He's all upset. No. Oh, yeah. So good, right? Decent? Oh, decent. That's freaking bomb, dude. That's missed you, Teddy. Okay, so tell me about the recipe here. Okay, so essentially what you need to know is for every ounce of bourbon, you take a bar spoon of uh, whatever sweetener you're using, and then if you're using a syrup, and then a dash of bitters for every ounce. And so it'll be two bar spoons of maple syrup. Two dashes of bitters. And this is the trick with the jigger. So fill her up, continue pouring for a little bit. Oh, that's fancy. That'd uh, be a single? That'd be a single. It's the wrong size. <laughs> yeah, it's the wrong size. <laughs> All right, so everyone uses oranges for old fashions. I like to use grapefruit. And is that a, adding flavor or just an ornament? Uh, it, it'll add flavor because we're going to do something extra special with it. Oh, lighting it on fire. What is happening right now? So you spritz it because there's a bunch of oil on the rind. So you spritz it over the drink and then it smokes it a little bit with the match. What? Not the exterior of the glass because that aromatic is a huge part of it. So there you go, that's your old fashioned. Wow. Fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Of course. Oh, wow. Isn't it pretty good? That is amazing. <laughs> wow. Glad you like it. You're invited on every trip. <laughs> we got her going. There you go, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Oh man, reaction time. What a difference. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Are you unwinding right now? I'm unwinding. This is gonna go down quick. And quick they went down indeed. You spent the rest of the evening just hanging out around the fire without the cameras. Even as the sun went down, the snow continued to fall and the temps continued to come down as well. At midnight, the snow still wasn't really sticking, so we had high hopes that the trail would be clear for us in the morning. With that, we decided to climb in our tents and get a good night's rest in preparation for taking on the whipsaw the next day. Good morning. Welcome to one of the most beautiful campsites I think I've ever stayed at. It was gorgeous before the snow came and then we wake up to a couple inches of snow and it is just so amazing. Lesson learned, I intentionally packed light because I knew this was a heavy off-roading trail so I wanted all the ground clearance that I could. And then mother nature throws this at us. So the plan today was to finish the whipsaw trail. But with the amount of snow that accumulated overnight and it's still snowing, I don't know if we're gonna continue on it. The exit to this trail, from what I understand, is we're gonna go up in elevation a little bit more, then come back down hard. And then to exit this trail, there's a very, very steep hill climb that takes like half an hour. Um, and with the snow that's on the ground, it just, it might be a little too sketchy. We're gonna wait and see what what Sean says about that, but um, I don't know, it'll be fun.
With coffee made and after checking the forecast, we decided to press on as it looked like warmer temps were on the way. Even if we weren't able to get out at the end of the day today, we would be able to get out the next day when temps were going to be in the 70s as opposed to the 30 degree night we just had. You guys probably know this about me. I do not like driving in the snow. It is one of my least favorite things to drive in. But uh, I'm in good company who have plenty of experience in the snow, so um, we haven't run into anything too hard at this point. Um, actually, hard at all. There's been a little bit of slip, but, but pretty manageable. But we're still early on in the trail, so um, the real test I believe is going to be Cadillac Hill which is the end of it uh, end of the whipsaw trail so um, kind of waiting to see what that looks like that'll be a tomorrow issue but hopefully we can even get you know to that point because it is still snowing which is wild to me it's June I think the whipsaw just uh, just changed our plans for us we got a problem oh shit he said we could get around this <laughs> Maybe if it wasn't snowing. Maybe. Even then, this is not this is not that easy of a get around. No, because that's really that would be really tight down there. Yeah. If there wasn't snow here, it, we might have enough traction. Uh, we'd slide right into them. We'd slide right into them. Is there any other way around this? Yeah, we're backing up for a bit. Yeah, like uphill in the snow. Okay, so after thinking about this a little bit more, I think the best bet for us is to turn around and kind of backtrack. So we had talked about very briefly going this route, but there's no way with the snow there we would just fall straight into the, the Suburban here. This is another possibility, but there's a lot of trees to clear and they're live and we don't really want to do that either um, another thing is there's another one of these on the trail broken down somewhere and we have no idea what that looks like so we made the decision all signs point to turn around and figure something else out so, so that's the plan but we're still gonna find something cool to do so oh don't turn off the video stay tuned stay tuned <laughs> yeah do don't that. don't change that dial don't switch the channel Wait till you see what happens next. You're not gonna believe what happens next. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so crazy. So we are back at the trailhead right now, airing up. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna drive to Princeton, have some lunch there, and kind of figure out what our game plan is. Um, we want to get a second night camp somewhere, but uh, we just don't know don't know where that's gonna be. So um, yeah. 
At lunch, we discussed our options and decided that a nearby mining town would be the best option for us tonight. There, we would be able to literally drive our vehicles into a cave, which I thought sounded awesome. So with the decision made, we started making our way to the next area. So I've had a lot of people ask recently what I use to keep my fridge uh, on and powered on these trips like this. Um, I use EcoFlow personally. I have the EcoFlow River 2 Pro and I absolutely love that power station. The cool thing about it is like while I'm driving, I have it plugged up to um, the car power so it's charging as I'm driving and then I have the fridge plugged in to uh, to the power station so I don't have to worry I don't have to switch wires or do anything like that when I get to camp it's the fridge is always on and whenever the car is on the power station starts charging automatically so it's a really good like don't have to think about it at all and I have power for the entire trip like I could be out for weeks and that's just on an infinite loop um, using car power to charge power station while I'm driving and then the fridge is always running off the power from the power station so anyways I wanted to answer that question for those who have asked and it actually times out perfectly because EcoFlow is running a uh, huge Prime Day sale, so you can get you can get your power stations and solar panels for a pretty steep discount. But if you use the code in my description, you also get an additional discount on top of the Prime Day sales. So go check them out if you're interested at all. Um, if not, I hope that answers your question as to how I keep my fridge powered.
taking pictures? No. Yeah. I should. So this is a sweet little cave that they knew about. Um, I'm glad we came up here to just, just to check it out. It's really cool. I haven't seen anything like this uh, in Washington. I'm sure it exists, but this is this is super cool. Cool experience. I've got a view. Nice smoked pork shoulder. Whoa. No, no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> that's the saddest thing that's ever happened to me. What are we gonna do? We're still gonna eat it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll literally eat the part that was on the floor. I don't care. It smells so good. Can we rinse it off? How, well, how bad is it? It's not even that bad, to be honest. But, whoa, it almost happened again. Dude, control yourself. That's just extra flavor. I, I think mean, it's fine. I'm not going to not eat that. That's one of the most upsetting things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> that's one of the most upsetting things that's ever happened to me. Ever. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> You saw it here first, folks. <laughs> God damn it. I love that fork. Where did you get it? The wood one? <laughs> I got it at uh, Save On Foods, actually. Mm. It's very Canadian of you. You also save on cutlery with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do things here. Oh, this is all for me? Yeah, dude. Holy! Cheers, 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 cheers. Cheers. Oh, man! That's so good. Is that all right? Yeah. That's pork and good. <laughs> I, I can't even <laughs> function around you with your freaking jokes. Pork and good. Despite the mishap of me mm. dropping this on the ground, this was an amazing dinner. We all fought our food comas for as long as we could around the campfire, but eventually we called it a night to get ready for the last day on the trails.
What was? The off the grind. Like kind of play on words. So I don't teach him. He'll never do that again. Not that he has the opportunity. No, it's fine. It's the end of a trip. That's Nothing has a, a good place. Idea. What's a good idea? Just go ahead and soft shock a little bit right here. Teddy, Sean, and I had an absolute blast over the few days we spent together exploring what British Columbia had to offer and adapting to all the curveballs that were thrown our way. I can't thank them enough for inviting me up to their area and showing me what this area has to offer. I'm looking forward to returning to Canada and completing the Whipsaw Trail with hopefully more favorable conditions. Until then, I hope you're able to get off the grid and off the grind, and I'll see you in the next one.